we have uh, things called like sales item, which we sell to the customers, right? If I am the Chroma or Reliance Digital, I'll be selling laptops, electronic items. So those are my sales items. Okay. Now, after sales item, you have something called revenue category also. From which category you are generating the revenue, be it uh, by selling electricity, be it by selling your services, financial services, or some products, okay, a group of products. So that is called your revenue category. So clear with this terminology, revenue category and this uh, sales item? Yes. Yeah. Okay. We have a few more things like payment terms. Payment term is nothing but in how many days the customer will pay us back. Okay. So suppose we are creating the customer invoice. We immediately use our credit card and pay them, right? And after settling the payment three, four days from the bank, they get the payment in their account. That's how it works. It's not like immediately you have used your credit card and they will get the payment in their account. No. At the end of the day, in their punching machine, right? When you swipe your credit card, there is a code which they have to punch. It runs a settlement process in the back end for the, all of the transaction happened in the day. And then that machine sends the information to bank, bank proceeded, check with our bank details, and then process the entire amount after cutting 2% commission. Or for Amex, it is 4%. But for all other credit card, Visa and Master, they charge 2%. Okay? Mm -hmm. And they deduct their 2% commission and 4% commission accordingly, and then they process the remaining payment to the client. That's an extra thing I'm telling you. So that's why you see Visa and Master are like financial services company, which earns in millions and billions of dollars without doing anything. They just hand over, they just give this Visa technology to the bank. Bank uses their punching machine or credit card machine. And then they, this is how they earn Visa and Master. They get 2%, 3% and Amex charge 4% from the clients for giving their machine and all those things. So that's a separate thing, but that is a payment term in how many does the customer will pay. So in real world, it would be somewhere around the 10 days, 15 days, 30 days, 60 days also, depending on the contract we have signed with the client. Now, other thing, customer category and customer group. So what kind of category this customer belongs to? Okay, so that is called customer category. So it can be from a retail category. It can be from a corporate category. It can be from some other XYZ categories of customers. Then group of customers. Okay, like we say group of countries. G7. So G7 are like develop, uh, countries group or a developing countries group, you can call it. And then it was G8, then they took out Russia from it and it became G7. So G7 is the kind of group where they discuss the economic uh, things, uh, environment and all other stuff. So it's a group of customers. Okay. While creating the customer, a customer category is mandatory. You cannot skip the customer category at all. You can skip the customer group if you want. You can add multiple customer groups, but customer category cannot be skipped and there can be only one value. So revenue category, I just said we created one, but let's skip that one. And uh, we'll say the category, which uh, is like by selling softwares. So we'll create softwares updated, software updated, new, something like this, right? Tax applicability, if any VAT applies to this revenue category or tax applies, then you can pick that value from here by saying input VAT or GST. Okay, so you can put VAT, GST, whatever it is, but we'll not select it as of now. We'll create some basic items first. Spend category mapping is for when you create intercompany transactions. So what happens in intercompany? Because when you create the customer invoice, the system has to create a corresponding supplier invoice also automatically. So for that purpose, we have to map it with a spend category only when if it is an intercompany revenue category. You know about intercompany transactions, right? Yes. Yeah. See, you are clear with that? It's yeah, like yeah. Wipro yeah. India is doing something with Wipro US. Okay. So like for big four companies or for any BPO companies, how it works is that, for example, Deloitte. 
Deloitte India. They don't get the project directly. Okay. So Deloitte US get the project from US clients or other clients. Then they reach out to Deloitte India for resourcing people. Then Deloitte India sends the billing to Deloitte US, not to the client. Deloitte US. That this is how many hours our resources work. So remember, like we have to punch in our timesheets. I'm not sure which software you use, but all of us may be using or submitting every week our times, like nine hours every day. Right? That is what we are clocking to the our counterpart in US. And then they're charging the same to clients. This is how the cycle works. So we'll skip this if you want to make it inactive for now. Click on it and it will be inactive, but we will not do that right now. Related work the usage. Okay. If this revenue category is for a particular fund, for a division, belongs to a gift, belongs to some XYZ work that, then we can select the value here. Otherwise, we can hit OK. But before that, remember, ah, where is that? Yeah. Before that, what's happening here? Why it's okay? I'm not sure why it's pressing my two fingers on the uh, keypad. It's just minimizing all the screens. So we'll look into the functionality of this new laptop later on, but let me copy this. Okay. So software updated new, and then we have to change the reference ID. Reference ID. So this is a system generated reference ID. And as I said earlier, you use reference IDs while uploading bulk data in the system or the integration team uses it for connecting with the third party apps, which is outside of Workday. Clear on this reference ID? Yes. So we'll just and as a protocol or methodology, you can call it. We remove the spaces with underscore. So when you can get done, now we'll create the sales item. So again, it's very easy. Create sales item. Sales item name. So as we are creating softwares, so let's create uh, something like uh, Workday software. Okay. We'll name it like Workday Financial. Finance module that we are selling to the clients revenue category which we just created software okay updated new we can use this one if you want to give a description this is for companies who uses work their financial something like this and real world or when you will be on projects this information would be given by clients to you. You don't have to create yourself your own sales item. Everything you, or the field information you are seeing here, every single detail on the screen would be given by your clients to you. And then you have to key in that information to the EIBs or ILO. If you want to identify this with a unique number, alpha unique number, you can do that. So we'll say Workday Financial Services. Okay, if it's part of a sales item group, you can do that. Sales item is a, in a bundle. Okay, so just like I purchased the laptop. So with this laptop, I had a charger. Okay, earlier they used to give some like uh, mouse also and some other items, but nowadays they don't give. Similarly, if you buy something with your uh, say mobile, then you get a headset, then you get a charger. But these days, companies are doing cost cutting, they don't give headset or hands free as we call it in Indian language. And uh, they just give you charger. Okay. So if it's a part of bundle, so that's why it says, if this sales item is a bundle, it is not. Fulfillment required, I'll show you when we start the customer contract, maybe tomorrow. Renewable. If it is renewable, suppose this sales item was supposed to be there for one year only. But after one year, do you think it will be renewed? Okay or there are chances that we would use this sales item again to sell it to the customers. If yes, then click on this checkbox, otherwise keep it blank. And we'll skip this information here for now. Again, your text applicability just like the revenue category. If you want to use it, use it, otherwise skip it. 
unit of measure is each okay so each module or each financial model software that we sell to the clients unit of measure is useless i don't know why they have kept it i was worked there also but it's like just it is there it is for the sake of it it doesn't do anything i'll show you in demo also so no need to select the unit of measure two again it's like you're buying water bottle okay so each water bottle costs you 20 rupees but if you want to say i want to buy this in uh liters also or in a box also or in a bundle also that you can also do you can say it's a bag or a box with some bottles then you will mark this in a bundle it's a part of bundle where we have 12 bottles or 10 bottles enable bulk quantity pricing so if this item we would be selling in bulk then we can mark this as enable bulk quantity pricing currency and unit price so what would be the unit price like in how many rupees or dollars you would be selling it to the client so let's say thousand dollars and currency would be USD. okay how do you want to recognize the revenue we'll say on invoice we'll not use accrued and effort for now just invoice and again if you want to give some related about the information that's fine then as part of good practice copy this and we'll change the reference side we'll go on these three dots integration id and reference id Okay, so the sales item is done. Now we'll create the customer category and customer group. So maintain customer category. Right now, we'll just click on this plus button here and we'll give a category called uh, US customers category. Something like this, right? I'm just making it up. It can be anything. Again, all this information will be given by to you by your client. So you don't have to worry about it. So after that, maintain customer group. So we would say again, US customer group, just to make it unique and after payment terms i'll show you that the reference id stuff also so we'll say maintain payment terms is the task okay so we just have this many only which is good we'll create our own So you must be wondering what is this 2% 10 net 30. So it means the actual payment date is net 30. But if client pays within 10 days to us, we'll give a 2% discount. I'll tell you that also, that how to find the discount date, by when they will pay and by when we'll give them a discount. So let's say we don't have 10 and 2%, right? So we'll say net 5% discount, or you can say, 5% discount 10 means if you pay within 10 days from the due date, uh, then we'll give you 5% discount and we'll send that 30. Okay, so discount percent, what I said is 5%. Discount is at 10. Now I'll give you demo here. So rule type is actually let me just say transaction date. So let me see if the transaction date is 22nd, what would the due date? Ah, oh, add months. Uh, month is fine or days, let me think. Days. It, it is, yeah. this would be fine, yeah. 
30 days will be fine. Mm -hmm. I don't want to make it 12 months. Okay, now I should calculate. Yeah, okay. So if he pays, the due date is from 22nd of uh, May. Sorry, actually, it's uh, yeah, May only. So 22nd of May, if we do any transaction, we create send the invoice to the customer. Okay, then he has to pay by 21st of June. 30 days. Yeah, right? 30 days. Give 30 days here. Yeah. We are giving 30 days here. So that's how the system comes to know that how many days we are talking in the in really. And percentage, how it, it will show if the discount percent? I'll, I'll show you that. I'll show you that too also. Okay. So there is a thing called record customer payment. And there I'll show you that it will calculate the discount amount automatically and it will show you the amount goals. That this is the discount amount we are giving to the clients. Okay. Hopefully today itself we can see that. Okay. So now just hit OK here. Now let's go to the integration ID, right? So we call something called integration ID. You run this report, you select the business object. For example, I want to see a customer group or company. Let's say company. So I want to see company's reference ID. Hit OK here. And as you can see, the business object name is company. This is the instance name and other details. This is the reference ID. Company reference ID setup is as GMS USA company. And if you want to search Twitter, I believe we had set up that company only. Uh, remember the name of the company, Twitter or something else? Wipro. No, it was Twitter it, something. It's a Twitter. Okay, then why Twitter is not here? Who <laughs> deleted our Twitter? Okay, so where is Twitter? Hmm. Wait, I think the tenant would change. That's why all these things, earlier things are not here now. Ah, it's there. Why then it's not done? TW101. Maybe it's because of some functionality, I don't know, or some issue. But idly it's there and it should have shown. So this is how you go to this integration report. Let's go back again. So this time we'll say customer group. Okay, and you can see the reference IDs of all of the customer groups here. So as we have not changed, it's still as customer group system. But you will say how we did not see the function to change the reference ID for customer group or customer category. Then you go to something called this maintain reference ID because if I go back I'll just show you first of all let me show there you show that maintain customer group come on now you see you don't have any field here okay but if you go here next to my fingers here also if you click on this Okay, and then you'll come here. Edit reference. This is like one by one. So if you go here, US underscore. But if what if you want to change in bulk? Okay, so for that also we have an option. US customer underscore. So we'll go to a place called or a report called maintain reference ID. Okay, here we'll type customer group now. Okay, and we'll set none of the above. It will show, it will show only one. Don't get <laughs> disturbed like why it's only showing one value. Actually, initially when I started uh, when I started learning, so at that time on Tarrant there were thousands of values, and when I clicked on this, I thought I did a blender mistake somewhere, and it's showing me one value only. And then somebody told me, man, calm down. It's just saying request page number. 
So in one page, there is just information for 100 of results. Total values are 10 only. So you have to focus on this one. There are 10 customer groups. In one okay? page. Yes. <laughs> I was my like half of fool with it. In Hindi, as you call it. I was getting restless. Like what blunder I did. Where were all the values? But so we have to go slow down sometime. And we have to read it carefully. Now if you see it here. We'll have that option. So see all the 10 items. And you can see the reference ID values here. And for US customer group also, whatever we had changed. If you want to change for this, it's somewhere else. I don't want to change it, but you can change still change it. Software underscore industry. Perfect. Now we'll set up the customer. Okay. So setting up customer is very easy. We'll say create customer. Very easy. And whatever values we have configured so far, we'll use all of them. So we'll say create customer. Okay, now we'll give it a name. So we'll say uh, Tesla. Tesla cars. Okay. If you want to create from a business entity, means a bank or tax ID or institution, then you can select it from here. But I have not seen anyone using this field. So there are many fields and information sometimes which is irrelevant for all of us. So we don't need to particularly go to every field and see okay, what should be done here. From learning from knowledge perspective, it's fine, but we don't need to select everything while we do configurations. Status is active. If you want to keep it in hold or inactive, you can change uh, you can change the status from here. Customer category. Now we would select that. US customer category. So see, this customer category is marked with an red asterisk sign means this is our mandatory value. And you cannot have more than one value here. You can just have only one value here. But if you go to customer group, you can see you can select multiple values here. There is no such restriction on the customer group side. Okay. That's an interview question also. We, the people who show up uh, with an experience of six months or one year, we normally just ask like very basic questions. We don't go in deep and then ask everything about work day. We just ask them like um, if customer category is mandatory or not, if customer group is mandatory or not, how many values you can select and all those things. The small, small things, uh, but uh, in interview, like it depends on the interview, what they want to ask. But typically we ask very general questions. Okay, now let's go ahead and Payment terms. So we had selected one one. So we'll say 5% discount at 30. Okay. If any tax code applies, like 10%, 20%, 30%, we can select that value from here. Okay. And based on the country, if it is like US based country uh, customer, then a US code is the Australia based customer, then Australia code and so on. So we'll not use anything right now, except all currencies. Okay, means we done we do transactions in all currencies with this customer. Okay, but any default currency in which uh, he makes the payment or we provide the items to him, that you have to mention here. It's not mandatory though, but it's good to provide. Customer security segment we'll understand in our security chapter, not right now. So hit okay here. Okay, so if you want to keep it in code or inactive, you can select the reason from here and give a description why you want it to do so. Restricted to companies. And if you see here, this system has even now this restricted to companies means suppose this customer is unique and does transaction with only few companies. 
or with one company. Okay, that company you can mention here. Like suppose if I put Twitter here, means this is the company for which it can be used only. If you want to do transaction for GMS USC using this customer, this won't be available. I'll give you a demo also. Once we start doing transactions, you can enable it for a hierarchy or for a company. Now, the next part is if so it, if we do not restrict it to the company, then it, it will be pick any any company, any, whatever any company. It's any company. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, if this is a parent customer and there are some children customer to it, so you can do that also. Let's see if we have an existing customers. You can mark it as your parent customer. Let me give an example here. Suppose Google is our customer. Okay. Google is our customer to whom we sell the uh, softwares and everything for XYZ reason for uh, ERPs and everything. But do you know who is the parent of Google? Alphabet is the real parent company of Google and other products. Or the subsidies or the acquired form. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, Alphabet, so Sundar uh, Puchai, and all these people. Okay. So, I, I'm, if I'm not wrong, Sundar Puchai is the CEO of uh, what do you call it? Apple or something. We'll give you one second. Just take out. No, Sundar Google. Pichai. Google. Google only, right? Sundar yep. Puchai. Yeah, I'll see the title coming up as CEO of Alphabet. Yeah, so he's the CEO of Alphabet, not the Google. Google is just a subsidiary form of this one, Alphabet company. So that's how like you can add the customers to it, that this is the parent customer and after that, these are the customer, like Google, Google 1, Google 2, Google 3, Google email, all those things. So now, as you can see, the related work that uses, one, two, three are marked as mandatory or default required. If I just hit submit, it will definitely ask me to give this information. Let's see a live demo. Let me hit submit here. And here we go. Four errors and definitely three are for this related work type only. One, two, three, and nine. Like we have to go scroll down also. So we have to provide the values for this uh, work text. Otherwise, we'll not be able to submit this customer. So let's select any random value for this customer. So payment term we have selected here. Nice. 5% discount at 30. Now default payment time. How the customer would pay us back? By cash, check, credit card, debit card, direct deposit, EFT, penal wire. I am selecting cash here. But if you select can we select anything, multiple? You you can have only one actually. As you can see, there's only radio button here. Radio button means if I select check here, it will go away. If you have square boxes here, then you can select multiple values. Okay. But if you have a radio button here, you can select mm. only one value.
This is an amazing thing. Default reference type. Okay, we have in India what we have called Paytm, mm -hmm. UPI, right? So if you see these values and you Google them, okay, Boleto Bank. Okay, so it's just like your Paytm of local Brazil or Brazil local Paytm, you can call it. Okay, just like we make the payments to anyone, to any supplier from any shop, the same payment methods and some countries what happens, they want a different payment method also and reference ID in their local system. So you have those values here. I had asked this question in the interview and the person had no <laughs> clue. Even I had no clue at that time, to be honest. <laughs> I just asked one day. What exactly is this? So this is like other different payment methods, just like we have Paytm, UPI, phone pay, same thing in simplest language. That's all. Don't get away with the fancy language here. Okay. In different countries, the name is different. Uh, names they have are their different. Own. So it's a or OCR, it will be somewhere else, something else. And these are the countries only which is this applicable. So once it's like this, you'll see, once it's like this, then when I will be creating the customer invoice, it would be asking for that reference ID here of this payment type. Like you have this payment, when you make payments through Paytm, right? You get unique mm -hmm. reference ID, correct? That yes. the person who gets the money, sometimes they click a picture and this is noted down, better from people, right? Same thing. Mm -hmm. Nothing fancy or nothing different. Okay. okay. If it's a direct deposit, then it's mandate required to deposit debit the account. If yes, click on this checkbox, otherwise keep it unchecked. Always a separate payment. This is also a very cool feature in Workday. So what it does is, suppose we have uh, 10 invoices. Uh, we have received the payment for 10 invoices from the customer. So what we want is, we want separate payment for each invoice. Okay, we'll tell the customer, don't club our payments into a single payment check and or uh, EFT or direct uh, transfer to our account. Please send 10 different checks to us so we can match it with each corresponding invoice and can do the reconciliation. Clear with this option? Yes. So but in that is, case, it must it must not be getting used frequently, right? People generally pay in one go. Yes. Correct. So right now it accepts all currencies. So we can do transaction with this for this customer with any currency. Mm -hmm. Default currency is USD. Remit from customer, if you see the help text here, it says customers with a different remit from customer, then itself cannot be selected as a remit to customer. Okay. Remit from a different customer. Suppose this is a parent customer, but some other customer pays back. So you can select this customer or that customer from here. Let's say customer group and APJ. There's no customer here. Let's see. Okay, not here. Leave it. This is some other type. Banking. So as we selected check, we need to give bank account here. So my dear friends, I'll just take an Indian bank here because finding the RDGS code for US bank is very tough. And the system matches it, validates it in the background. So it takes some time. And if it is not correct, then it will keep asking the right RDGS code, which I don't want to do. So I'll just select an Indian bank here. Let's say uh, Tesla, Tesla SGFC. Okay. And if it is checking means in US, we call it as a current account. Okay, and in India, like uh, we call it as a current, in US, we call it as a checking account. So we call it as a checking account. Okay, country, I'll just like India here. So why we need this bank account? Suppose the customer makes extra payment. Okay, then we have to send that amount back to the customer. So for that, we need a bank account. Or just to reconcile from which bank account they have made the payments, you can get the information from here also. Now you can see, so I'll just select here. Okay, account number. This one, name on account is uh, Tesla Cars. We don't work on weekend. We do. Weekends. Any address bank has, then you can put it here. There was a blank. 
tax information, any tax ID or tax code which applies, you can add it, otherwise leave it blank. Any nodes you have for this customer, so you can add a node, a follow-up date if you want. So let's say, okay. This is a nice customer. We are happy with it. Providing us good business. Anything, it can be anything. Okay, I'm just making it up. Okay. Any attachment? Because when you create the customer, like you have some documents, some contracts, all those things, you can attach it here. Contact information. This is very important. Let's add some random numbers here of India only. Uh, okay, phone number. Uh, phone device. Okay, if it is a mobile or landline or anything. Then if it is a primary phone number, like the main phone number of the customer, if it is yes, then yes. Then what it will be used for? For billing, rabbit to and shipping queries. Then you can add an address. Let's add an address here. So let's say 10. Okay, assigned roles, we are not assigning any roles right now. We'll talk about that in security chapter in detail. So it's absolutely fine. Rates and collections. Okay, DNS is a global number, done and sweet number. Done and sweet number is a given unique number based on your credit rating. It's a global agency which gives you a rating based on your credit rating and all those things. So okay. you can say DNS number is the blah, 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 blah. you can Google it. My actually dream company, I've worked in many companies, but uh, my dream company is uh, this, what do you call this? Uh, ah, it's a banking firm. What's the name of that? I'm getting Society old, Generally. No. Society General, Goldman Sachs. At Goldman Sachs, yes. I had given it to you once, they had rejected me. I don't know when they will hire me again, but yeah. Why? What special there? Bonus. The bonus people get. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> is sector twenty one. Me. We have a Saxo ba bank. That's mm -hmm. an investment bank. That that is also very good. But I really do not know about the work culture over there. I don't have very positive things about uh, Saxo. But I know that's a good company. That's so, yeah. What I know. Good. And now we'll hit submit. I think we have filled a lot of information here. 
one error. And we got one error. Let's see. Uh, okay. Second down row. Code. I have to see code. Start at one zero. One more zero there. Uh, it's four thirty eight. Let's try. Oh, what happened now? Yes, finally it's done. So we got a reference ID. Uh, we got a customer setup again. We should use the same reference ID or the customer ID. The reference ID also. So copy this. Go to three dots. Integration ID. Add it reference ID. Change it. Ah, what is this? So this looks amazing. If you want to navigate the customer hierarchy, you can do this because we had already some children to this customer. So he becomes the parent automatically and there should be some customer also. What are those customers? Oh, come on. I had given some children also, isn't it? Why it's not showing up? Ah, ah yes. children, we missed it. Some obviously got refreshed. That's why. But you add this customers or children and it will show you. 